Hello, how are you doing? Uh, it's another beautiful day that the Lord has made. And today, I'm um, much excited because I will be speaking about the seven different mysteries in the Bible. Do you know that in the Bible we have seven different mysteries that the Lord has uh, been revealed to Paul? So these mysteries, I'm sure not so many people know about these mysteries. And also they are hardly preached as much in uh, many churches. And I thought today, why not just uh, speak about the mystery? So the first mystery that you're going to speak about is the mystery of godliness, which is, uh, let me just say, is number one. All right, number one mystery. The first mystery that I'll be speaking about is the mystery of godliness, okay? So now we see these mysteries were revealed to Apostle Paul. Uh, by God. We can just go to Ephesians 3.1 and see something here. Ephesians 3.1 from uh, 3 verse 1 to around 5. And then the Bible says, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you heard of the dispensation of grace of God given to me, given me to you, word, how by revelation he made known unto me the mystery to understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, prophets, by the Spirit. So now we see that Paul was revealed by, some, by God some mysteries, all right? So Paul is Paul. He also went and told the apostles about these mysteries. He told them, hey, this is what God revealed to me. You see, there are so many people who just say, I'm following Jesus, but they don't want to follow what Paul was teaching because so many of the things have been revealed to Paul. We'll be able to see later on the mystery, the mystery of indwelling. You're in Christ and Christ is in you. The mystery also of the rapture. The rapture was not there at the time of Christ. Nobody knew that there would be a rapture. So all these things have been uh, revealed to Apostle Paul. And if you're really keen on the word of God, it's very important that you be able to understand these mysteries because that is one of the things that Paul was revealed to. But today we are checking the mystery of godliness, okay? So we should have fellowship as Christians in the mysteries of God. So the Bible says we need to have fellowship. Fellowship. We need to have fellowships. Fellowship as Christians in the mysteries of God. All right. Let's see Ephesians 3 9. What the Bible says, Ephesians 3, uh, verse 9. The Bible says, having made known, uh, sorry, Ephesians, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm in verse 1. Ephesians 3 9. And to make all men see what is a fellowship of the mystery which is from the beginning of the world, has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So we are told that God created all things by Jesus Christ. So we see Jesus as a creator. As a creator. All right? So God is telling us all things were created in, uh, they were created by Jesus Christ. So that is one thing that we have to understand and we are told to have fellowship in the mysteries that God has been able to reveal. So let's start. So what's the mystery of godliness? We see this mystery depicted very well by Paul in 1 Timothy 3.16 where the Bible says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. So we see, we are told that God was manifest in the flesh. There are so many people who say that Jesus is not God, especially people from Jehovah Witness and all that. So we know, the Bible tells us, God was manifest in the flesh. This is God manifest in the flesh. All right? So that was Jesus. So for those people who always uh, have been, I, I've seen those Jehovah Witnesses knocking in, in my door and knocking in other people's doors and saying, you see, you ask them, what are you teaching? They say that we are teaching about Jehovah, 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 yes. No problem about that. But now when you ask them, so is Jesus God? They try to deny. They deny so much. They say, 
Now, you see, Jehovah is not God. Jehovah is not God. Uh, Jesus is not God, I mean. And uh, you ask them, if the Bible tells us God was manifest in the flesh and he came in form of Jesus, Jesus is God actually, then why are you denying that? We see Jesus lived about 33 years. And our calendar is based on Jesus Christ. We, we count today, we're in 2020. We are, when are we, we are counting these days from the birth of Jesus Christ. So it means this is really an important man. And this is a mystery which was kept hidden so much that people could not be able to contemplate very well the whole thing of the Trinity. Why, if God is in heaven, why is also on earth as Jesus? And why do we have the Holy Spirit? You see, that whole thing is a whole mystery. And the whole mystery was revealed very well uh, during the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. So how it, how it happened remains a mystery. Let's see the book of Isaiah, what it talks about, this mystery, and it talks about how uh, Christ's birth was like. So we see in Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 7, 14, the Bible tells us this about the birth of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 7.14 says, uh, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So when you hear, a virgin shall conceive, you see, for someone to be conceived, there has to be a man, there has to be a man's seed. But this is a mystery how a virgin could be able to conceive. It only would have been through a mystery or it would only be a, a miracle from God. And this is something that people have always gotten confused. How could it happen? Because we understand very well that unless there is a man and there is a woman, there can be conception. And then this is a woman who is a virgin. And actually King James is the only Bible which talks about uh, a virgin but the others they say a woman uh, you know a young woman and all those kind of things so we see 700 years before Jesus was born already this one was already spoken by prophet Isaiah so who is Emmanuel the Bible tells us already who Emmanuel is there we have just heard he will be called Emmanuel so we want to see if this guy or this boy or this child will be born will be called Emmanuel then who is Emmanuel let's go to uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew 1, 18, the book of Matthew 1, 18 to 23. Let's see what uh, the Bible says, 1, 18 to 23. Then the Bible says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away bravely. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take up thee, Mary, thy, thy wife, for, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus uh, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done in that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the, of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. You see they are quoting the words of prophet Isaiah, Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. So we understand that Emmanuel, Emmanuel, is God with us. Emmanuel is God. God with us. And we understand this Emmanuel was Jesus. So if Emmanuel is God and Jesus here, this is the name of Emmanuel is also Jesus, then we understand that Jesus is also God. All right. So it's very important to understand these things. Uh, and we see the Holy Spirit uh, we see, you see, there's, there's something we call the laws of nature. The spirit world cannot mix with the, today's world. And uh, having seen an, uh, the Holy Ghost or the, the Spirit of God impregnating a woman, 
here on earth, it is uh, against the laws of nature. The spirit and, and what is here cannot mix. So this one also remains to be a mystery how it happened. Because you can't just say it happened like this. Because there have to be something. The spirit world and the normal world are two different things. Okay. And uh, we see also this one explained very well in Luke one twenty six. I know it's a really a, a very confusing topic, but it's very good to understand. So that I want you to understand. For those people who say that Jesus is not God, then this one will be able to open up your eyes and you can be able to understand. Luke, Luke 1, 26. At around 35, the Bible says, And in the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into her and said, Hail thou, art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, saying, and cast in her mind, What manner of salutation this should be? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. All right? Mary have found favor with God. And, uh, and behold, you shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and he sh shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give him uh, unto him the throne of his father David. So once we see that, Let's see verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom shall there be no. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the, shall be called the son of god so we see the angel confirming that indeed this jesus who will be born will be called also the son of god i know most people are usually confused especially muslims they always say you see, Jesus was not God. Jesus was just a prophet. He was just a, a, someone who was created by God. No, Jesus was not created by God. He was God. And the Bible tells us very well. And it explains to us this whole mystery of godliness, how Jesus came to be God, and he came as God here on earth, and he was born as God, God manifest in the flesh here. So it's really important to understand that Jesus is God. And we also see... Uh, John, uh, in John 20, 28, this guy called the Doubting Thomas, he also called Jesus, my Lord. So who is Lord? Let's see that verse. And Thomas answered and said, John 20, 28, and Thomas answered and said, unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me, yet they have believed. So Jesus said in his own words, you have seen me and you have believed because you have seen me after I, have, I was raised again by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have believed because you have seen me. But blessed are those who believe me even if they have not seen me. So blessed are those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God even if you have not really seen him with, his, with your two eyes. So Jesus is the Son of God and he is God, all right? Uh, let's see 1 John 20, uh, 5.20, what the Bible says. 1 John 5.20. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we, and we are in him that is true. Even his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. So we are told that Jesus is the true God. All right, true God. Jesus. You see how the Bible dissects very well to be able to understand who is Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus manifest in the flesh. Jesus is a true God. All right. So the mystery of godliness deals with three things. This mystery deals with three things. Number one, two, and three. It deals with showing you the mystery of the virgin birth. Uh, the virgin birth. The virgin birth. And then it also shows you the deity, the deity, the deity of God. 
of God. This is what we call the divinity. The divinity of God. And of course, it shows us about that God is a trinity. God is a trinity. That is three in one. So if you don't understand this, uh, it may really be so confusing for you. You may really wonder and ask yourself, how is it be? How will it be that God is three in one? How will it be that God has three different parts? How can it be? Uh, and this one can be answered. When a woman is pregnant, the child produces his own blood. And the mother's blood does not mix with the child. That's why you see uh, like women who are maybe HIV positive and all that. If they, they don't get any cut in their body and all that, the, their blood cannot mix with the blood of the child. And the child will come out healthy. Why? Because the blood of the child does not mix with the blood of the woman. And so the only blood which is in the child, it is literally the blood of the father. The father, it's like you create, the father creates his own blood into the child. So we are sinners, but Jesus' blood never mixed with blood of his, of his mother. So Jesus never became a sinner. You see, if Jesus' blood could have mixed with the blood of uh, Mary, then it could have meant Jesus is not a sinner because now he could have transferred the genes of sin to Jesus Christ. But we see that one never happened. And also at the cross, Jesus shed his own blood. The Bible tells us Jesus shed his own blood, not the blood of man, not the blood of his mother. It is God's blood. So Jesus shed his own blood, all right? In the book of Acts 20:28, 20, the Bible says, take heed Therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So we are told God's blood, the blood of God purchased us. All right. This is the blood. The blood of God purchased us. And if you understand this, it will be much more easier to know that you are not purchased by the blood that uh, the blood of Jesus was not the blood of Mary. No, it is God's blood. And we are told that by the Bible. So if we are purchased by God's blood, then it means it is God himself who came from heaven and he became manifest in the flesh. And being manifest in the flesh, he was able to die for us. So the blood which was shed for your sins is not man's blood. It is God's blood. So Jesus is the Lord. He's the Savior. And God, uh, the Father, even confirms the same. He says in Isaiah 43.10, Isaiah 43.10 to 11, the Bible says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. You may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So God is confirming that, hey, before me there was no God, neither shall there be after me. So if there was no God and he will never be after him, then who is this guy who is saving people here with his own blood? Then this means it is God himself. It is God himself. And verse 11 says, I, even I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So if Jesus is the Savior, then it, what does it mean? That Jesus is God. So how can you save, uh, how can you save the world? And God the Father says there is no other Savior. And yet you're saying you're the Savior. Then it means you are the God that who is saving uh, people. So God says he is also the Redeemer. In Isaiah 44, 22, the Bible says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy signs. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. So God is also the Redeemer. He is also the Redeemer. All right. So God being the Redeemer, it means... When we are told that Jesus has redeemed us, then it means that if Jesus is the redeemer, then Jesus is God. Are you understanding that whole mystery of godliness? I know it is a bit confusing, but once it gets inside your mind, you can be able to understand and affirm for sure that God, Jesus is God. 
manifest in the flesh. He is God himself, all right? Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, for I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. He's confirming again, I am the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So if you are the first and the last, then who is this one saving us here? Is, is him, God. Isaiah 44, 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid, for, for I have... Uh, fear ye not, neither be afraid. I have I not told you from that time, and have and have declared it. You are even my witness. It is there a God beside me? Yeah, there is no God. I know not any. God the Father is confirming. There is no other God beside me. And if Jesus is coming to save us, then it means the one who is saving us is God Himself. But now he has been manifest in the flesh. All right? So you understand that you're not saved by any other person. And Jesus was not just a prophet because he comes here and he says, Hey, I'm coming to save you. I am coming to show you the way. I am coming to save you. I saved you with my blood. I died for you. Then it shows that this Jesus is God. All right? And uh, most people might ask, so what is the, the Trinity? What is this Trinity? Let me, let me give you a good example. Trinity. Uh, Trinity. I'd be able to explain what exactly a Trinity is. Let's take, for example, a football. We have a football. A football, the one that we play, uh, soccer. This is football. Football has three parts. And three, the three parts are, number one, we have uh, the skin. All right. We have the skin, the outer skin. Then we also have the bladder, or we call it the tube, bladder. And then we also have air. So these three, unless they are three like this, it cannot work. You cannot be able to get a football. So the same thing is how the Trinity is like. There is the skin. There is a bladder, all right, the bladder, let me write, yes, the bladder, and then we have air. And what do they represent? The skin is what we can say, for example, is the outer court that you can see, that is Jesus, all right? The outer court that you can see. The bladder is the soul, soul, which is uh, the Father, God the Father. And then we also have air, which is represents the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is represented, you see, the body. All right? So we have Jesus being the body, Father being the soul, and air being the Holy Spirit. This is how the Trinity looks like. So you, with this, you can be able to understand the whole aspect of the Trinity. And also I can show you something else. Maybe I can also uh, give you another good example here. Uh... Okay, let me just rub here. I don't like rubbing, but let me also show you something here. The Trinity is also like this. This is a circle, and then we have uh, we have one part, and then we have another part. Um, we have this, and then we have this. So when it's like that, it represents here we have God the Father. We have the we have a son and we have Holy Spirit. So all of these are God. So you see, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit, but the Son is God, Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. So this whole thing explains the whole aspect of the Trinity. All right? So it explains that the Holy Spirit is God, the Son is God, the Father is God, but the Son is not the Father, the Father is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Son. So that one is able to explain to you, it is one God with three parts. It is one God, but he has three parts. And he also says that 
Even us, we have been created in his image. We have been created in the image of God with three parts. Let's see, Genesis 1.26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. Hear these words. He's saying, in our own image, in our own. So with three parts. So man is also created with three parts. Man has three parts. So let's say this is, a, this is man. This is man. Uh, sorry for my poor drawings. This is man. He has three parts. He has the inner side. There is the body. Body. And then we have the soul. And then we have a spirit. So when you're born, the spirit is born dead. All right? Empty. Why? Because of sin. And unless somebody is born, then you cannot be able to get the spirit filled here with uh, uh, the spirit cannot come alive. So the Bible says here, and God said, let us make man in our image, an image with body, soul and spirit. All right. After our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over the, uh, all the earth and every creeping thing and, and, and all that. So the main thing is. We were created with three parts. And once we were created with three parts, this was Adam who was created like that, with the three parts. But now when man sinned, you see, man had three out of three parts. But when you sin came in, this man no longer was... Uh, when sin came in, he, got, he lost one part. He got two out of three when he sinned. So Adam was this. This was Adam. But then after Adam, the other uh, offspring were born with two out of three parts. And if you divide two out of three parts, this one already tells you is 0.6, 6, and 6. This is why it's called even the number of man. Why? Because this is a sinner. This is someone who is a sinner, someone who has done sin. So it shows if you are to be born with three out of three parts and you have died, your spirit has died. So it shows you that you have two out of three parts. And when you divide two, divide by three, it gives you 0.6666, all right? So this is who we are. For those people who say that, hey, we are born, we are born uh, in the image of God. No, you're not born in the image of God. You are born in the image of Adam. And even the Bible confirms in Genesis 5.3. Let me read for you. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own, in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Why are we not told Adam bore a son in the image of God? No, he bore him after his own image and his likeness. The image and likeness of sin. So you are born with two out of three parts. And unless you get saved, when you're saved, your spirit comes alive. The Bible says that unless somebody is born of water, unless you're born of water and spirit, you can never see the kingdom of God. So born of water and spirit, what does it mean? Water, unless you're born of water and spirit. Being born of water and spirit, when a woman gives birth, water breaks. And when the water breaks, then immediately birth begins, life begins. And when you're born of spirit, immediately the Holy Spirit comes inside you. You are born, all right? You are born again. You are born of the Spirit. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 1.13, In whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you believed. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you are sealed with the Holy Spirit who gets inside you. So when the Holy Spirit gets inside you, you become born again. The Holy Spirit comes inside you. And then now you are born again. And once you're born and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit in whom you are sealed to the day and to the day of redemption. So when is the day of the redemption? The day that you'll be redeemed from this body of sin. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit who is sealed inside you up to the day of redemption, the day of going to heaven. Because the Bible tells us you cannot lose your salvation. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is sealed and you have been told he's sealed until when? 
It's not sealed until the day that you sin. It's not sealed until the day that you have done something wrong. No. Until the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit has gotten inside you and, and he has locked from inside. So he cannot come out up to the day of redemption. That is really, really important knowing that you're born of the Spirit. All right. So that's really, really important. And even First Thessalonians 5.23, the Bible says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body, your whole soul, I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if it's preserving blameless, it means that you're not the one who is preserving your life. You're not the one who is preserving the spirit inside you. You're not the one who is preserving your salvation. It is God himself who is preserving. So if God is preserving your salvation, you cannot lose your salvation. You have something you call eternal security. You are, ass you are assured that you're going to heaven. You're 100% assured. But you also see something else, that the Trinity can also separate itself. The Trinity of God, this one, Father, Holy Spirit, and the Son, can separate the three parts. Us as human beings, we can separate ourselves. No, it's not possible. We can separate our body, soul, and spirit unless we die. But, the, but God can separate himself in three parts at the, whichever time that he wants. And this one can be explained very well. What happened the day of baptism of Jesus Christ? Let's see what happened. Matthew 3.15 And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus is becometh unto fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. That is, John did not want to baptize him, uh, but uh, Jesus tells him, No, no, let, baptize me so that you can fulfill all righteousness. And verse 16, listen. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water, and lo, the heaven were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and the lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. No, now you see, God is in heaven saying, This is my beloved son. The Holy Spirit is descending, is somewhere down. And then we see Jesus, the son, God, the son here, just left the water. So we can see the, the Trinity dividing it itself in three parts at the same time. God the Father in heaven, the Holy Spirit coming down, and then we have Jesus here being baptized. So the Trinity can divide itself, but us we can't. And that is one of the mysteries of godliness and how God has been able to put uh, is, is so mysterious, but he was able to open the same to Apostle Paul to also tell us, hey, this is a mystery, all right? And uh, when someone gets the Holy Spirit in him, when he dies or raptured, he shall go straight up. Why? Because the Spirit of God, this is the Holy Spirit, is the same one who, which raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And the Bible tells us very well, the, the verse that I had read as we, as we began, 1 Timothy 3.16. Let me go back there. Let me show you 1 Timothy 3.16. We have been told, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit. So the same Spirit who justified Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit rose Jesus Christ is the same one who is going to raise you at the day of the rapture. So the main thing that you need to know and the thing that you need to understand is you need to understand the gospel. How are you going to understand the gospel? Because the gospel is what is going to make you get the Holy Spirit inside you. And once you understand the gospel and where the gospel is and what the gospel says, then you're saved. The gospel is everything that you need. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians, the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it is, says, it states how that Christ died. Christ died for our sins. was buried, rose again, then according, according to the scriptures. 
Once you believe the gospel, then you are assured of one thing. You are assured of salvation. You are assured of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you. Let's read that uh, uh, verse very well. Moreover, brethren, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. I declare unto you the gospel. Uh, which I preached unto you, which you have received, and wherein you stand. So the gospel has to be preached to you. You have to hear the gospel. Uh huh. You have to receive the gospel, and you have to stand in the gospel. Okay? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you. So you have to keep in memory the gospel. You understand it. That is the... That is your certificate, all right? Uh, unless you have believed in vain. What is believing in vain? Believing in vanity, believing in another thing rather than what Jesus did for you. Believing in maybe I can do something to earn my salvation. That is believing in vain. Uh, all right. Mm, verse 3. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? He shed his own blood here. So without shedding of blood, the Bible tells us, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. This blood is the one that saved us. This is how, how Christ died. It's very important you see that one word, how Christ died. Because most people think, because I can repeat a certain prayer, I've done a video about the sinner's prayer heresy. People think that because I repeat a certain prayer and I don't look on the blood of Jesus Christ, then I am saved. No, you're not saved. Repeating a prayer or saying something or doing something or being baptized or all those kind of things cannot set you close to God. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ. How that Christ died. Believing in this. Believing in this. And that he was buried. Uh, how that uh, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Once you believe what Jesus did for you. Now, th those people who say that the blood of Jesus is no, of no importance. Just imagine, think of it. If Jesus died out of being, uh, you know, maybe getting inside water and uh, he drowned in water or he was electrocuted or he was... You, or, or something happened which does not involve the blood. Could we have salvation now? No. Why? Because the blood is really important. And the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. And Jesus became the Lamb of God who was slain for your sins. So unless you understand the importance of this blood, and that's why the Bible says in the last days, people will have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. The power of what? The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel. This is what can be able to save you. This is the only thing which can change you. And if you believe the gospel, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. And you'll be able to understand. And all the other things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He'll be able to teach you this happens like this. This happened like this. Because when the Holy Spirit is inside you, he can speak to you. He can always tell you. No, don't do this, do this, you know, go this way, don't go that way. And the Holy Spirit is in you. God does not hear the prayers of a sinner. The Bible tells us very well that God does not hear the prayers of a sinner. He only hears obedience. Once you obey and you do what he has told you to do, then you are going to be saved. There are so many people, you see in Matthew 33, the Bible says, Jesus, that day, the day of judgment, Many people will come saying, Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do this and that? Great people, I believe others will be preachers. And they'll be telling, Jesus, but we did all these things. And then he'll tell you, depart from you, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Why will he say, I never knew you and you've always been preaching? Because you've never accepted the gospel. You've never known this. Most of the people right now, they think, because I'm in church, I go to church every day, I am saved. No. Once you believe this, then you're saved. This is your certificate to get you to heaven. When you get to the door of heaven, you'll be asked, where is your certificate? Were you born again? Did you receive what I did for you? Did you receive the gospel? No, I was in church. I was always in church. No, that's not what I told you. I told you to receive this. Did you receive this? Did you trust this? And once you trust, that is your certificate. And you're assured of going to heaven. Believe the gospel, and I'm sure you can be saved. And uh, you can always talk to other people. You can always tell them, hey, to also believe the gospel, to also understand 
what God did for you. That is a mystery of godliness. And uh, if you hear it and you understand, it will be so nice. There are other different six mysteries. So they are all seven different mysteries. I'll be speaking about them. So you can always check out my videos. And I believe it will be a great one. God bless you and have a great time.